Hello everyone, this has been a lot of time since I created a video. But as I said in the last video, I was moving to, well, not another country, but kind of, because I'm still living in Italy, but I'm pretty near France now. Now I'm living in the frontier. This is because now I work for a luxury cruise company who is based in Monaco, so sometimes I have to go there, sometimes I have to go around, because obviously as a cruise company, you have to work all around the world. In my last role, I was working as a UI designer, a senior UI designer for a company based mainly in technology stuff. But now I'm working in the whole field because as an associate creative director, you have to see printing, you have to see advertisement, digital, etc., etc. So today I want to talk to you about how it's work in the luxury field, what are the good stuff, the bad stuff, and see if you have a future interest or sensibilities that can bring you to work in an international environment full of challenges. Hi there, I'm Felipe Iglesias, designer and creative director, and this is Token Design. Subscribe to the channel if you want to stay updated of my new videos. I know that the last time I, I haven't met my goals in the right way, but as you can imagine, changing city and the stuff and practically my world, it was kind of complicated to stay stick to a schedule. The, the first thing about luxury is that, as you can imagine, it's expensive. It's not expensive just because someone wants to, to be expensive. It's because the kind of services are, are quite expensive, are quite personalized. But it's also pretty expensive on the side of production. For us as a designer, we have to figure out how we can develop products and create services the best way for our clients. And those clients have a very high level of comparison because they are accustomed to live in a certain way. So when you create luxury products, you have to be very focused on quality. And quality is not just about what are you selling, but how are you selling the stuff? So for this reason, when we create, for example, a brochure, the brochure is made in the best paper available, trying to stay stick to good standard for sustainability and quality printing and so on and so on. But also you have the complication that working in an international company, maybe you can print in one side of the world and you have to distribute everything around the world. So on one hand, you have the creative side of the work when you have to design and think how the stuff will look and try to coordinate designers in order to achieve that goal. And on the other side, you have to be very aware of the kind of paper and quantities that are available and how much time something like that will be deliverable. For this reason, sometimes we print here in Europe or in the United States or in Australia. It depends on the market and the necessities specifically attached to that market. Also, it's a very competitive market and it's not just competitive because there are other luxury companies trying to compete with you, but also because even clients with a lot of money at disposal to do stuff, to do take vacations and planify the stuff, they are usually very sensible to price. So you have to create the best option on terms of quality and services, but also on pricing even though our prices are pretty high. For this reason, you have to combine two stuff that sometimes are kind of contradictory. For one side, in luxury, you usually work with tradition, which is trying to maintain a history and narrative which is consistent in time. But on the other hand, you have to innovate in order to create something that is more appealing, because otherwise you will be obsolete. And one of the challenges of my industry specifically is that we work with technology and technology usually goes obsolete with a very short period of time. And when you're working with ships, that's not very cheap. The other thing that is pretty complicated to handle and it requires a lot of effort and concentration is how to maintain consistency in every asset. Because when you have a company that's working with different seasons around the world in the two hemispheres, you have to see how you can communicate in some way in one side, for example, in Australia and then in the United States. And even if you are changing a little bit the message in order to be more, in, in order to engage better that kind of client, 
you have to maintain the uh, image of the company. And when you're working in a specific field, in a very niche market, you have to be very careful because otherwise you can start to overselling your brand and that's not good in luxury. In luxury, you have to be very careful when you can do a discount or where you can do an offer. Everything has to be very calculated, very miserate in time. So many times it's pretty challenging the fact that you cannot innovate as fast as you want because you have to maintain consistency. So sometimes or many times, consistency is more important than create a very spectacular solution in one market that cannot talk with everything around the service. As you can imagine, in an international company, language is very important. For this reason, I have to speak most of the time in English and I'm not an English native person as you can feel because I have a strong Spanish accent. But having a good command in on language is pretty important because in that way you can communicate the ideas, the concepts and the challenge you are confronting your teams or challenging your team in a way that is transparent because otherwise nobody will understand what you want. And also you have to debrief sometimes the ideas from different markets and try to bring solutions. And our teams are based in Italy, Monaco, England, United States. So sometimes is the most difficult part is try to maintain this fluid communication with the same kind of reference when you speak about something because sometimes it happened that for many reasons cultural reasons or for the resources that are available in a specific market the things are called different or for example resolutions or formats are pretty different and you have to adapt and understand when this is happening in order to provide solutions that can be adapted to that market also as i said before Products in luxury are pretty, pretty, pretty expensive and are pretty expensive because they're usually very personalized, they're very specific, they usually offer stuff that no one can offer to other people. So the margins for luxury companies are not that big, even if the products are pretty expensive and the creation of them are also pretty expensive, the margin is not that high because you have a limit, you have a limit. You cannot overpass the market because at some point, even if the people have a lot of money to spend on something, they will notice that something maybe is over the value of the perceived value. And that is very important. For example, in technology, you almost have a gap. Just Apple have surpassed that gap and saying, oh, okay, now my products are pretty expensive, more expensive than you are willing to spend, that means that a very important challenge in luxury is how to manage perceived value. So you can feel that your products have a lot of value and you can sell it at the price you want, but the clients, the customers could not think the same and that is complicated. So you always have to start to study the market to understand how is the feedback, why are the expecting or where are the areas where you can improve. And finally, it's extremely demanding on details. You have to be very careful about everything. Text, copy, the kind of images you are using. Even though we work with the best photographers available in the market, it's pretty complicated to have the best image because you have a lot of different variables. The day where the shooting is made in, the ship that is available, Everything could complicate everything. Also, you have to book people, move it from one country to another. And with COVID in this period, it's also more complicated because everything has to be followed by the strict guidelines in order to not create havoc. So that's it. That is my uh, six months experience working inside the luxury world. It's a very interesting challenge. It's very interesting for a designer point of view in order to try to innovate and create new stuff and improve processes in design. And I hope that in the next months, I will show you what we do in some way uh, and what are the new challenges or where are we moving forward? Because this market is growing every day and also the company have very, very, very interesting goals to achieve. So thank you for your time. Please subscribe, leave your comment, that is very important, and put a like if you like this video. It will help the channel to grow. Have a nice day.